Hey, Canyon Lake, it is Pastor Brett, and I'm so glad that you are here with us today as we join together in worship. Uh, welcome. Uh, friends, today as we come into this time and this place, so many of us are are thirsting for the living water. And so my prayer um, over this, this next 30, 40 minutes is that we might be renewed, uh, that God's grace might pour into us and begin to flow from us anew. Uh, so friends, let's go ahead and join our hearts and our minds and our voices in, in worship together as we open with this song. Will you all pray with me? As a deer longs for flowing streams, so our souls long for you, O God. Create your living springs in our hearts. Come to us, Lord, and fill our longing. May we be refreshed and restored in you. And teach us where to find the bucket and how to carry it, so that we might draw the water for those who most need it. Amen. me, Erin Woods, your children's ministry coordinator. Grace is a gift, but it's a gift of love from God. And that gift is not something necessarily that we deserve. We didn't do anything to deserve this gift. It's just something that God gives us. It's the love that God gives us. It's the forgiveness that God gives us. And there is absolutely nothing in the world that you can do to lose that love and that forgiveness. So when someone says, give somebody a little grace, what they're saying is show them love, show them forgiveness, even though they might not deserve it or have earned it, they get it anyway. 
I think the most common thing that we all think because we're human is, can I do something to lose that grace? Or will God's grace ever run out? Because we all make mistakes and we're going to keep doing things that are that are wrong. So will God ever stop loving me or stop forgiving me for the things that I do? And the answer is no way, Jose. And so I brought a really cool visual demonstration to show you how that grace overflows and how it never runs out. Here I have a container and I have some shaving cream. The container is bigger around. I can fit my shaving cream inside. So if I were to spray shaving cream into my container here, it should fill up and we should be fine, right? Let's check it out. So the shaving cream represents God's love and forgiveness, remember, which we don't necessarily deserve and have not earned, but we get it anyway, and that's called grace. And I'm going to spray it in here. Oh, it's full. So is that all there is in there? Oh my gosh, no. If I keep shaking it, I can tell there's much more inside. Oh, maybe that's all? Nope, there's still more. We don't have time for me to sit here all day and show you just how much shaving cream there is in this bottle. As I shake it, I can still feel that there's more shaving cream in there. And so I hope that this visual will help you see and remind you how amazing God's grace is, that it overflows and it will never run out. God will never stop loving you, never stop forgiving you. Whether you think you deserve it or not, you are loved for ever and ever. Remember to always shine God's love. See you later. Hello everyone, my name is Hayden Bentz and I'm the online campus coordinator here at Canyon Lake. We're so excited that you've decided to join us today. Now, let us bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together on this fabulous day that you have made for us today. Let all of our worries and troubles and anger and spite be given to you, God. Let you create us a clean heart and a right spirit within us. We pray this as Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello, Canyon Lake Online. My name is Raymond Ellis, and I'm the ministry intern here at Canyon Lake. Today, we are continuing our teaching series titled Refresh. Over the past few weeks, we have talked about the refreshing that God offers to us, not by striving to do more and to be more, but by resting in the goodness of God. The first week, we started with the creation story, 
and how on the seventh day God rested. And later when God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses as a gift, rest was number four on the list. We left that day with an assignment to go home and take a nap. So if you missed that assignment, you can catch up on it later today. Not now, later today. Next, we looked at learning how to let go of the seemingly endless expectations and the shoulds and the should nots that we put on ourselves and those around us. And that by loosening our grip and letting go of those things allows God to refresh our joy, peace, and our purpose. Then we looked at creativity. Pastor Brett and Mike reminded us that God's creativity is a part of our DNA. And allowing God to refresh us through changing our routine, making our bed, taking a leap, we find a foundation in Jesus in which to build upon. And last week, Pastor Deanne and Carol spoke about the millions of miracles that are everywhere in our lives. We may or may not need a pair of those special, red, fabulous glasses. We just have to look. God's miracles are everywhere. Today we're going to talk about grace and how refreshing God's grace truly is. Before we start, I'd like to pray. Holy God, you have given us so much. Thank you. Thank you as you continue to pour out your grace, love, mercy, and forgiveness on each of us. Bring us your word and purpose today. Refresh our heart, mind, and soul. Amen. One of my favorite places to go on the planet is the beach. And really, any beach will do, but my favorite beach would include a few things. White sand, clear blue water, the smell of salt water, seagulls soaring in the breeze, and the sound of waves crashing on the shore. It is there beside the water that I'm reminded of a passage in the book of John. John 1, verses 16 and 17 reads, From his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Did you hear it? Grace upon grace. Sounds a lot like wave upon wave. Grace upon grace and wave upon wave. God's grace pursues us consistently like the ocean's waves. It does so in our heart, in our mind, and in our soul. In our heart, God's grace aims to recreate. In the book of Ezekiel in chapter 36, verse 26, reads like this. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God's grace can turn a heart of stone into something useful. Have you ever felt your heart becoming more like stone? I have. Maybe it's towards something in particular. Maybe not. Maybe you just feel the heaviness in your chest and in your life. It could be an issue in our country, in our community. Maybe it's our place of business, a coworker, our family, a spouse. Maybe your heart has become like stone to the point of not knowing what to do. Well, that's when grace is present. We often close off our hearts to others and to God. When we've been hurt 
in the past or allowed our emotions to push us around. Or maybe we've argued with someone or with God so much we don't see how we can be loved. But God's grace continues to pursue our heart like wave after wave. God's grace aims to reconnect in our mind. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Apostle Paul writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. God offers us grace in our minds through our thoughts. With more grace upon more grace, thought upon thought. The Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, Think about these things. Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, excellent, and anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Through our thoughts, God's grace aims to reconnect in our mind. God's grace also aims to rest in our soul. When we are surrounded and filled with kindness and peace, we often notice it when we are present in the moment with a friend, a child, or a parent. In these moments, we are able to laugh more and experience joy joy more easily. Anxiety fades away. And even when sorrow and grief are present, God's grace washes over us. Jesus had a heart, mind, and soul. He was fully human. He had friendships, at least 12 of them, but probably more. His friends got things wrong. They got things wrong a lot. And Jesus worked continuously to transform them, giving them grace upon grace. I get things wrong. I dare to say I get things wrong a lot. Do you? The good news is that we most often see Jesus in each other. This means that we can be couriers of grace that we have the opportunity to receive grace from one another and the responsibility to respond and offer grace to someone else. By doing so, grace will touch and refresh everything that we are, our heart, our mind, our soul. Grace will refresh who we are as a person, who we are as a parent, a friend, a coworker, a boss, how active we are in our church, in our community, family, even who we are as a neighbor. As we allow time with God and time with each other to recreate our heart, reconnect our mind, and rest our souls, we do so not because we want to do more and to be more, We do so because we have a calling to create and maintain the space for encouragement, grace, and accountability, not only for ourselves, but also for others. In closing, God's grace has no end. It's not a one-time event and then you're done. It's more verb than noun. It's more growth than stationary. It's timeless, never growing old, consistent and powerful. Like wave upon wave, God gives us grace upon grace. Amen.
if I told you my story, you would hear love and never give up. And if I told you my story, If I told you my story, you would hear victory over the enemy. And if I told you my story, Thank you so much for that amazing message, Raymond, and, and for that song, Darren. And, and now, friends, we get to come to this time of, of offering ourselves back to God in worship. And so there are a few ways that we can give back uh, that allow Canyon Lake to keep being the church. And so if you've got a, a financial gift, uh, you can give that online at clumc.com. You can mail it to us at 3500 Canyon Lake Drive, Rapid City, South Dakota. Or if you're local, you can pop it by the church office during the week as well. And of course, there are so many other ways that we can give back to, um, like with our time and our talents. And so, friends, if you're looking for a way to get plugged in, uh, contact me. Please, brett.rose, R-O-E-S, at clumc.com. 
whether you're near or far, there's a place uh, for you at Canyon Lake to truly make a difference. Um, and then friends, uh, just a couple of announcements for you today. Uh, really the big thing is just a reminder that we do have a blood drive coming up next Friday. So if you're eligible to give blood and you think you might want to, but you haven't signed up yet, uh, this is your last chance to make sure that, that you are getting signed up uh, for that. It's next Friday from 2.30 to 6. If you've got any questions about how to get signed up, uh, please contact the office, office at clumc.com. And then with that, friends, there are so many other really important announcements about all that's going on uh, in our congregation and, and in our community. And so I wanna direct you to our newsletter uh, to really see a lot of those. And if you're not getting our newsletter yet, again, just email us at the office and we will make sure uh, to get you on that, on that email list so that you can stay the most up to date uh, with all that's happening with Canyon Lake. And friends with that, thank you so much for being here in worship with us today. And I'm gonna send it uh, to Raymond for today's blessing. It's time now for our blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>